We're going to talk about the falling literacy rate of New Zealand's students and school leavers because it is being described as a national scandal. However, a group of experts, along with policymakers and politicians, have put their heads together and they're trying to come up with a pathway to reform. How can we improve our students' learning? We have Massey University Professor James Chapman with us and also zooming in from South Australia, Director of Strategy and Senior Research Fellow at Multilit, Dr Jennifer Buckingham. Thank you so much to both of you. Uh, I think the first thing, I might come to you, Professor, first of all. Um, how do we define a falling literacy rate? Is, uh, is, it, is it by the numbers? Is it by the results? Just explain that for us. I think there's a range of indicators that uh, really define what the falling literacy rate is. It's certainly a range of numbers based on international surveys. That's a key part of it. But it's also based on anecdotal evidence of employers, of uh, people in tertiary institution, institutions finding that uh, when children finish school, their literacy levels are not as good as they should be. But certainly on the international surveys, New Zealand has been steadily declining since 1991. And one of the elements of decline is one of the widest ranges of scores between those who are competent readers and those who are struggling readers. And that wide, wide range seriously disadvantages children from low decile schools and disproportionately large numbers of Pacific and Maori students. I'm glad you said anecdotal evidence because, and I'm going to sound like that boring old guy here, but I'm going to say it anyway. And this is not just New Zealand, this goes across the world. Technology, smartphones, text speak, abbreviations, all these sorts of things, have they made it worse? Well, New Zealand is really no different from other countries in terms exactly. of children's use of smartphones. It's no different in Australia, the UK, US, Canada, other countries. So that, that is not a plausible explanation for the declining rate in New Zealand. The, the most plausible and fixable explanation has to do with the way that we teach beginning readers the day that they start school at age five. Then this is a good time to bring in Dr Jennifer Buckingham over in Adelaide because um, I believe Australia, or parts of Australia at least, uh, Dr Buckingham, are looking at a sort of pivot, if you like, towards more and we already have the phonics-based learning, but more of the phonics-based learning from early uh, in a child's uh, education. Phonics, of course, being that, you know, my name would be spelt out, um, you know, ka, a, m, a, h, l, or something like that. Yes, that's right, Kamal. So we have in Australia over the last uh, 10 to 15 years particularly started on a, a series of reforms around literacy policy and what's going on in, in classrooms. Uh, and so some of that has been at the school level. So it's been slow, um, but definitely um, observable. So uh, a lot of schools have been making themselves much more well informed about effective evidence-based reading instruction that includes uh, particularly explicit instruction in phonics, um, like you've described, mm. um, but also at the policy level. So our, our very recent Australian curriculum removed um, all of the, the last little bits and pieces of um, whole language approaches um, and is much more now evidence-based and much more pointing towards uh, teaching children those essential building blocks of language that they know they need to know how to learn to read. Do you favour the phonics approach, just as an example? Because I must admit, well, when my daughter started in school, I struggled with that idea. I was coming from that generation which said, no, you learn the letters and learn how to spell like that. Well, it's both logical and supported by decades worth of studies that add up to you know, thousands of articles um, that mm. all consistently point in the same direction, that uh, beginning readers need to know how our language works. Our language is a code. Written language is uh, an invented code which has an alphabet that represents the sounds in speech. Um, and if children are going to learn how to translate print into words that they understand and then comprehend and enjoy reading, they need to know how to crack that code. Mm. Uh, Professor Chapman, do you like what you're hearing coming out of Australia there? Are there things we can learn and apply in Aotearoa? Uh, ab absolutely. I think uh, Australia, some states in Australia are showing a leading example as to what New Zealand could and should be doing and what a number of us in New Zealand had been, have been advocating for decades. I mean, the mention of the word phonics, you're absolutely right that a lot of teachers use phonics, but in an extensive mm. survey at Massey University a number of years ago, we found that, yes, t uh, schools do, do use phonics 
as a part of their literacy instruction. The problem is most of it is somewhat, I would say, haphazard. It is not systematic. It is not explicit. It is not a core part of literacy instruction. And that's the difference. So you talk about phonics in school. So of course we use phonics, but it tends to be a clip on to their whole language approach to literacy instruction. It's a clip on that doesn't actually work all that well. What other things would you advocate? And indeed, with, with the, the research that's going on, with the, the, the policy makers, the politicians, the experts have all gotten together, other practical things which can be applied? Yes, I think there are a number of things. I think, number one, we need much stronger leadership from the Ministry of Education. They funded research at a number of New Zealand universities that show that children can benefit enormously from a much more explicit, systematic approach to literacy instruction, which includes phonics, but it's not phonics isn't the be all and end all. Mm. It is an important part of it. It will help children uh, crack the alphabetic code, as Jennifer mentioned. It, so it needs strong leadership from the Ministry of Education. I think there's a role for the teaching council to play here in terms of the standards of literacy instruction in the initial teacher education programs across the universities. There is also a role here for universities, which I think have been somewhat laissez-faire when it comes to initial teacher education, especially in the area of literacy instruction. Most, but certainly not all, university colleges of education appear not to have a systematic approach based on the science of reading, based on structured literacy, that initial teacher education students can go out with on their teaching practice and then when they're employed in their first year of teaching. That's an important area as well. It would be very good as well if politicians could come together across mm -hmm. party political lines and, and help that leadership role that needs to be done. And even, I know the smile, and even if it's not across, <laughs> across party political lines, at least there is scope for leadership from intelligent members of parliament mm. who can say, all right, we need to get together on these issues. We cannot continue to have the very, very poor rates of literacy that seriously disadvantage significant proportions of our population. It is unacceptable. Yeah. It flows through into the secondary school. It flows through into adulthood. It flows through into the prison population. Politicians working across party lines. You're a revolutionary, <coughs> Professor Chapman. Um, Dr Buckingham, final word with you. Is there still room for quote-unquote old-fashioned learning? I'm talking about things like grammar because I know I didn't learn enough grammar in school and I'm a journalist now and it would be very, very helpful if I had. Those sorts of, what, as I say, what might be considered old-fashioned building blocks, is there still room for those? Most certainly. And, and grammar was one of the things that was thrown out or sidelined around the same time as phonics instruction started to be sidelined um, because it, it was sort of seen as being too rigid um, and the, the philosophy was around if you let children just look at books and be exposed to print and be read to, then they will somehow or other just pick up um, the way that uh, the written language works. Whereas, in fact, written English is a very complex language um, and most children will not just work out how to use it on their own. And, um, and we're, we're seeing um, the consequences of that in literacy rates. Um, it needs to be taught, it can be taught, um, and we know how to do it. It's just a matter, as, as James said, um, of, of finding a way through all of those obstacles um, that have been in place in the past and, and making it happen. Dr Jennifer Buckingham, uh, joining us from Adelaide today, Professor James Chapman as well from Massey University. Pleasure talking to both of you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.